Hey guys, Quantum here, and in this video I wanted to explore an alternative way to build and, and basically approach Ruby Sapphire. Obviously we know the current version is very meta, it's it's strong, don't get me wrong, but it does have some inherent weaknesses in my opinion. Um, and being a control player, you like to be in control, and one of the worst feelings is when you're playing like the other version of Ruby Sapphire on like 20 plus on Inkables, not being able to play the game. Not, not very much of a control oriented player when you when you can't actually do anything. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at this uh, updated deck list, I guess you could say, in, in action. Um, whether or not I do more content on this particular deck list will depend on, let me, uh, on your responses. So let me know in the comment section below if you do want me to explore this deck a little bit more, because as you can tell from what I mulliganed and what's on screen here, this build is very different than the traditional builds of Ruby Sapphire that you see in the metagame. Um, I will do a deck profile on this. Uh, it will be available to YouTube members first. So if you do want to support the channel for early access to that stuff, you can do that with the join button. It's like $2.99 a month. Again, you don't have to, it will be made public, but you know, if you just want to show some extra support, that is an option. But in this video, I have one match where I go up against a Amber Steel player, and you might be thinking Quantum Ruby Sapphire should absolutely dominate uh, this matchup, and normally it does. But my version has a weaker matchup into Steel um, as a trade-off to have a having a much better matchup into Aggro decks, because we know the current version of Ruby Sapphire really can struggle into, let's say, like Emerald Aggro decks, for example. Emerald Amethyst is the one that comes to mind immediately. And what you see on screen here is me utilizing the new Flynn Rider, the Guardian Dragonstone, instead of something like a Fishbone Quill because I'm less kind of all or nothing in terms of getting to my uh, top end very quickly in order to stop my aggro opponent from winning the game too soon and more focused on a tempo oriented strategy where using something like the Flynn Rider with let's say the new Sisu I think it's called Emboldened Warrior the the one that's a three drop it's a 1-4 body that gets one strength for every card in your opponent's hand when you put that on field with the Flynn Rider there's likely nothing the aggro opponent is going to throw down that's going to stop the Flynn Rider from gaining you three lore at the start of your turn. So therefore that Sisu acts as a way for you to generate three lore at the start of your turn, keeping pace with the aggro uh, quest. But also that Sisu is likely gonna be at least a 4-4 body, if not a 5-4. And that's gonna allow you to trade out that Sisu into the aggro threats that your opponent are, uh, is questing with. And so it, it kind of serves as a, you, you hopefully you can see the concept there, right? It serves as kind of a, a double-edged, um, not a double-edged sword, it's uh, like a double benefit, sorry. Um, where you're getting the lore off, this, off of the Flynn Rider thanks to the Sisu, and the Sisu being a, a X and 4 body is able to trade out multiple aggro threats. So you're able to gain the lore by, while also controlling the board state in, a, in, a, in, a, in an early game um, scenario. And then in the later game, you still have the ramp, you still have the Hiram draw, you still have the removal of the Medusas and, and the, uh, the, the new Sisu uh, and so on and so forth. So in this particular matchup, you saw that my opponent unfortunately was able to out my um, Guardian Dragonstone, so I wasn't able to start passively gaining that ink. And yes, Dragonstone is, is inherently a lot weaker than Fishbone Quill because, first of all, Fishbone Quill allows you to ink unexerted, whereas the Guardian Dragonstone, the ink that you get from your discard pile getting into your inkwell comes in exerted so you can't use it right away and fishbone quill uh, obviously allows you to ramp anything from your hand but the guardian dragonstone is only characters from your discard the difference obviously is um or sorry and the other main difference is the guardian dragonstone comes into play exerted so you can't use it right away so in this scenario you saw the opponent benja it before i got any advantage and then i couldn't even hear him it away so this amber steel player is obviously on the item hate with aladdin and benja so it makes this matchup a little bit more difficult for me but overall the ruby decks should still um, come out on top against the, um, the, the the steel decks more or less. So, like I said, I, I'm more than happy to take a slightly worse matchup into steel in order to have a better matchup into aggro. But the reason why the Guardian Dragonstone is interesting is because if I if I manage an um, an early and mid game state with let's say Flynn Rider, the Sisus, any other kind of early to mid range threats that I may establish. I can afford to more passively ramp because I'm not needing to aggressively ramp up to the higher end. And that's kind of the concept that I was going for, where I can just, you know, for two or three turns passively just generate ink that I don't need to use right away. And then when we get to the end game, when I have like uh, 10, 11, 12 ink from that Guardian Dragonstone, I'm that much far ahead of my opponent and I'm able to start dropping huge threats. Um, and it's just like with, I had a Fishbone Quill, but I didn't need to, you know, kind of go all out and ramp aggressively from my hand, lose a bunch of advantage and, and just hope that I draw my Hiram and scry for my Hiram and stuff like that. So I, I've been able to cut out a lot of that um, because again, it does seem like it's kind of 
a stressful situation almost, right? If you ever if you've ever played Ruby Sapphire, it's like, oh my gosh, am I gonna brick? Am I gonna draw what I need? Am I gonna have to ink my good cards that I need? You know, like I need to play this Gramatala to scribe, but I have no other ink, so I have to ink it, that kind of thing. Um, so like I said, I'll, I'll do a deck profile um, that, that will be available to members first to kind of explain this a little bit more. So going into the matchup here, we're, we're able to stabilize a little bit after the opponent whole new world. And unfortunately we do draw into all three copies of our Sisu um, that wipes the board for two strength or less characters. And I'm in a little bit of an awkward situation. And this is where you could argue Fishbone Quill would have solved this problem. Because next turn, I can't play the Ice Block and, and the Sisu. Um, if I had a smaller Sisu, it's kind of weird that I didn't see any of my um, three drop Sisus, the one that quests for two, the one four body. That would have been nice to have on field to shift this Sisu, uh, the bigger one, because I could use the Ice Block, uh, reduce the Aladdin by one strength, and then Sisu absolutely wipe the board. But you can see that this Flynn Rider is causing my opponent to make some very awkward plays here. They know that I'm going to generate three lore with that Medusa being at five strength thanks to the Lumiere pumping it up. So they opt to establish the Cinderella and this is why I brawled away the Amber Cinderella because I didn't want to risk them shifting it. And it turned out to be the right choice. I could live with a Robin Hood because obviously, you know, the Medusas and the Ice Blocks with the Sisus can deal with it. Um, and it looked like the opponent was kind of telegraphing that they had the shift Robin Hood. Um, but they drop the Cinderella in order to mitigate the three lore gain off of the uh, Flynn Rider, which is probably the right play. So I quest with the Madame Medusa and nothing else in pass turn. I do anticipate the opponent is on another whole new world in hand, but they probably don't want to risk ra um, ramping me uh, into a new hand. Basically, not ramping me, but giving me a new hand. They don't know that I have um, these Sisus though, because I think it's this turn where they actually cast a Bare Necessities to see my hand, and um, you know. It's, it's kind of unfortunate because it's like the one it's like the turn before I was going to finally drop that ice block and that's really what this deck likes to do too is it really functions around using the both of the new Sisus the one that takes out one strength or less characters and then this big Sisu for two strength and less characters but also the Madame Medusa in combination with the ice block in order to just decimate the opponent's field so I think taking that concept from Ursula's return and obviously we know that the the current meta version of Ruby Sapphire uses the ice block with those with those combos. That is a very strong interaction that can help you dominate board states as well. And that's why I think you can afford to slow the game down a little bit more um, in order to you can like in order to still utilize that package to to control the board state in the later game so the game doesn't necessarily get away from you you can see here that you know we, we were able to claw back in in lore up to seven the opponents on two cards we have more cards in hand we have more characters but the opponent definitely has the more impactful cards and they're really thinking through what the right thing to do is here um because if they challenge the medusa i have the option um of dropping this maleficent dragon next turn which they know i have since they bear necessity me and they don't have enough to do all their interactions in a turn because i'm almost positive they're sitting on another whole new world and so my thought process is i just need to get out my threats as, as soon as possible so of course we're going to drop the maleficent dragon there and taking out the tinkerbell and again i'm, I'm anticipating that the last two cards in the opponent's hand is another tinkerbell and a whole new world and the reason for that is because you wouldn't really drop this tinkerbell unless you really needed to aggressively out the Flynn Rider and the Lumiere. So the Madame Medusa throws itself into the Cinderella in order to make sure that my um, Maleficent Dragon is the strongest character on board for the Flynn Rider. And as, as expected, the opponent does indeed have the second Tinkerbell in order to wipe out the Flynn Rider. So they mitigate the lore gain off of that Flynn Rider. So very very good on the opponent um, and they ripped the ice block out of my hand unfortunately. So what you're going to see me do here is use Popsicle and probably try to dig for another um i should probably quest first don't play that okay i play the maui uh that's that's a bit of a weird situation i guess yeah I take out the aladdin finally um but i probably should have really okay mm, yeah i think i should have quested with the hiram first i don't even quest with hiram here because i don't want to get tinkerbell taken out if tinkerbell crashes into the hiram it takes out the maui so I guess this was the safer play, keeping these two Sisus that the opponent knows I have in my hand and putting them on if you want to um, whole new world me. I guess it's okay. They aerial into a Zeus, which is a good option for them because now they can hard cast Zeus and sing a whole new world. But yeah, if the Tinkerbell throws itself into the Maui, they lose their Tinkerbell. I guess this was my thought process in the matches. If they, and you know, them getting the Zeus there um, kind of changes things a lot. But if they threw the Tinkerbell into the Maui, they can't sing Whole New World, they'd have to hard cast it. The the Tinkerbell deals two damage to something that doesn't take out what I have, um, anything that I have there. So 
yeah, it was kind of an awkward, putting them in an awkward position, but that Zeus allows them to take out my Maleficent Dragon, and then they opt to not um, throw any of their characters forward. So I'm just going to go ahead and shift the Sisu now, and that takes out the Aladdin and the Ariel, which puts them off the Singer for a whole new world, meaning they'd have to use their Tinkerbell. Um, and now I'm thinking if I want to ink this Gramatala, because again, I'm anticipating the opponent might whole new world, but I'm like, no, this, this thing could represent good value if if, uh, if I'm able to play it next turn anyways. They top deck a Beast Tragic Hero, which is pretty strong for them here, and you can see how nice having an Ice Block would be. Like, I could take out all of these three strength characters with an Ice Block with my Sisus. Um, we do draw into a Brawl and a Guardian Dragon Stone with the Hiram Quest on the Popsicle. So I'm going to drop the Stone and the Gramatala and just i think pass no i have to quest with the sisu here right yeah okay um and then okay inking the brawl i guess that's fine since i have the sisu in hand again i'm anticipating the opponent has a whole new world in their hand they're just they're just sitting on it um and this is why this matchup is so tough for amber steel so you know the opponent did a great job in order to survive as long as they did but at this point it's really it's going to be really hard for them to try to find a win condition even with flutes at this point it would be too too slow um so in this board state i think they have to use their tinkerbell probably to take out my sisu and then deal two damage to my maui which i'm fine with okay they draw a little storm rage on that's interesting they're going to put two damage on the maui to take it out and draw a card. I guess they're digging for some options here. Um, again, they're they're in an awkward position, but this is what Amber Steel has to do. Like they have to cast a whole new world. If you don't cast a whole new world, you just don't get it. You just don't gain enough advantage. Um, and so I'm really happy that Ruby Sapphire is a deck that can counter Amber Steel Song because I do think a whole new world is is way too powerful. I've said that many times. So yeah, the um, Tinkerbell takes out the Sisu, which is good to see. I'm happy to see that. Um, they're probably going to deal two damage to the Hiram because they're not taking out this Gramatala, right? Like it's way too beefy at a 4-8 body. Um, and then they probably have another damage spell in order to take out the Hiram, I would imagine. Um, or they throw their beast into it, which puts them off their card draw anyways. They could also be on Rapunzel, which might be an issue. Um, gives them some additional card draw, but not too much. They drop a flute, go to 10 lore, and that's fine. It's way too late for flute to have an impact. They cast the Bare Necessities to take a look at my hand and uh, yeah have nothing for them to discard they knew i had that cc from the last bear necessities now we're going to be able to use the um dragonstone to passively ink and at this point it's just additional lore gain um for the gramatala we, we don't need the lumiere at this point because we're beyond the point of um the flynn rider closing up the game for us like we don't need that and yeah i, I don't i don't necessarily need the extra ink now from the guardian dragonstone so i used it once uh, to get to get the lore off of Gramatala, go to 13 ink, and like look at look at look at the state of the game now, right? We go out like literally literally double the ink, uh, five times as many characters. We had more cards in hand for a little bit there. Um, we just go overextending on the board because we know there's no way the opponent can deal with this, and at this point it's going to be kind of closed out. So, yeah, it's it's an interesting take on Ruby Sapphire. Um, I played two matches with this deck against a Ruby Sapphire player who resigned early and this Amber Steel player who this match was like 20 minutes but I reduced it down to under 15, obviously. Um, still a good matchup for you, but uh, an interesting take. I, I'm hoping to get more matches in if you guys are interested in this deck with uh, some aggro games. So again, if you're interested, let me know. And drop a like on the video if you haven't already, if you did enjoy that. So thank you again for watching. Quantum is out.